How do you say a little bit spicy? Thank you. Hi, today I'm making a video about things that I wish that I knew when I first moved to Bangkok. I'm walking along the Klang. That means canal. Because it's near my house and it's a convenient way to get to the airport SkyTrain link. Klang boats are a very inexpensive and efficient way to get around Bangkok. And they travel to the far suburban reaches of southern Bangkok. It is a great way to explore parts of Bangkok that are inaccessible by other means of public transportation. I don't know the name of this station. I may not be able to pronounce it anyway when I find out what it is. This particular rail, light rail system, is the airport link. It goes from the airport to downtown. It turns out I do know how to pronounce it. It's a Ramkanhang. And I'm boarding here to take you all to uh, Suvanaboom Airport, where I'm gonna give you a bunch of arrival tips. I don't wanna make note on this map here. We're boarding at Ramkanhang. If you go in the other direction, one stop, you can connect with the MRT, which is a, uh, another rail system. And if you go three more stops, you can connect with the BTS. There are three distinct railway systems here in Bangkok, the BTS, the MRT, and the rail link. So when you arrive on international arrivals, one of the first things you'll encounter after clearing immigration customs are these kiosks from AOT Limousine, that means Airports of Thailand. This is what I use for 1,200 baht, about $35, you can get a Toyota, Toyota Camry. The driver will speak English, he'll know where he's going. It's a good deal. Now, if you want to save some money, I'll show you other ways to get into town as well. But I like them, and I use them. It's a good service. Right in front of them, you have the true kiosk, which is a much smarter place where it used to be on the second floor. Come and get yourself a SIM card right here. Now, this doesn't apply for people arriving now much more restricted arrivals. You have to go to your quarantine hotel and all that. So this is going to apply for people who arrive here once all the restrictions are lifted. Right now is a lot of security here and there's a lot of places I can't go and shoot pictures. But yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. The AOT limousine is a good deal. I'll show you a few other things as well. One flight down from international arrivals is doorway number three where if you exit there, you will find the uh, lineups, the queues for taxis. Metered taxis going into town are very inexpensive in Bangkok. Nowadays, they're particularly eager because there's not a whole lot of business here at the airport. There is a queue for when they are busy. Uh, doorway number four might be more convenient, it's closed now, but I'm sure that'll be open when the airport's back to being fully functional. You're supposed to go over on the queue and get yourself a number and the dispatcher, you can see that this guy is directing everybody to go get, go get a ticket number. And you get a ticket number and they tell you which taxi to get into. The problem with Bangkok taxis is very often they don't know where they're going. And they have this deal where they're always you know, telling you they don't have change. If you go to an ATM machine, the ATM machine is going to give you 1,000 baht notes, which are $30 approximately. And uh, you get in the taxi cab and he's like, oh, I don't have change. Now, I thought that was a scam when I first arrived, but it isn't necessarily very often they don't have the change. Here is the actual entrance to the queue to the lineup to get your ticket. It's not a lineup today, you just walk right in and you 
you get a number and go to your taxi cab. Before you go in there, off to your left, you'll find ATM machines. ATM machines uh, here in Thailand take international debit cards and credit cards so you can get some cash. But again, the problem is they're gonna give you a thousand baht notes. So if you can somehow get some small bills or change prior to arriving, that would be helpful if you're planning on taking a taxi cab. I disembarked at the Makassan station, which is a very central location. I just exited the uh, rail link at that station there, the Makassan station of the airport rail link. And there is this walkway that I took that brings you down to a connection with the MRT, which is an underground rail link at this point. Now, as you can see, this is a very busy part of town. Bangkok, it can be validly asserted, has three downtown areas. We are very close to one of them. Just the other side of that shiny building is the Asok area, known very well to locals, or the Sukhumvit area, where there are a lot of expats, and it very well may be the place that you are headed when you arrive here. So if you're taking the airport link, take that walkway down to the Petrobori station of the MRT, and you'll be one stop away from Asok. Now, we're going in the other direction. I'm going to board the MRT and head that away. Maybe you could see off in the distance there that Lotus. That Lotus is a supermarket and a good one, and it's attached to a, uh, a big shopping mall that specializes in electronics equipment. And I used to live up there, and I'm going to go show you where I first lived when I arrived in Bangkok. And this is near where I live. There's the Lotus, the Tesco Lotus place behind me that I mentioned. You also have Fortune Town, which is a great big tech mall for uh, technological gizmos and gadgets and cameras and stuff like that. It's a good place, you know, a lot of computer stuff. And on this side of the street, you have the Central Mall. There's a couple of Central Malls around the city. And I learned of this apartment where I'm taking you now in Lumpini, Lumpini Place. That's the name of the apartment complex. I learned of it from a friend of mine, Eric. Uh, we had become friends when I was living in Singapore. And Eric moved to Bangkok a few years before I did and became very successful at managing Airbnb apartments when that whole thing was at its peak, when Airbnb was peaking. Eric was managing more than 20 apartments, and he was good at it. And this is where Eric lived, and he's the guy that alerted me to it. Now, what I didn't like about Lumpini Place is it was a bit of a hike from where I got off the MRT. It was about a 10-minute walk, and it's not the most pleasant walk in the world. I mean, you have to walk along this very busy roadway, Rama 9. It's uh, highly traveled, and as you can hear, quite noisy and... Yeah, polluted and blah blah blah, you know, complaints like that. Yeah, more noise, there we go. Big noisy bike that can never go over 40 miles an hour in the traffic here. Oh, I guess it's going over 40 miles an hour now. But the neighborhood has changed significantly since I lived here uh, almost six years ago. That Unilever building is new, that wasn't here. And this big baby, this is quite an impressive building. I'll show you a shot of it from the side. You get more of a sense of what it's like. It's built up quite a lot here since I've been here. They have wide walkways that you can walk upon. That wasn't here when I lived here. So here's the profile of that building that I just mentioned. It's kind of a cool looking building. And like I said, it's gone up within the last five years. These white tents that you see over here is the train market. Now the train market used to be in a different location and just recently reopened here. I'm not gonna take you in it now because it's not open, it's a nighttime market. But they have food stalls and places to buy, you know, things to buy, clothing, uh, different goods. I bought this wallet at the train market in its old location like five years ago and I still have it, it's held up very well. So that's a nice place. That might be worth a video of its own one day. I'm still walking. Here I am, Lumpini Place. I still find it to be an unpleasant walk. Noisy and polluted. 
but this is one of the four buildings that are in this complex and it really is a pretty nice place. I'm sitting in one of two very pleasant outdoor gardens here at Lumpini Place. This is one of several very nice amenities of this uh, complex. Uh, Lumpini has several apartment complexes, at least three that I know of, maybe more around the Bangkok area. This one is Lumpini Place. I highly recommend them. They did a very good job of managing this gigantic apartment complex. Now it had a pool, a very nice pool, a decent gym where you can get a workout, gardens like this. There are some amenities here. You have a 7-Eleven on the ground floor, restaurants, coffee shops. Uh, there's a handful of them here within w w within the complex and they also have a van that runs every 30 minutes from the complex to the MRT so if you were particularly whiny like I was coming in here you could wait for the uh, van to pick you up at the MRT although I used to just walk I would take the van going out coming in I would walk it's not that big a deal it's about a 10 minute walk uh, it's a great place, uh, and the cost of this place was 14,000 baht per month for a one-bedroom apartment. Well cared for, furnished, it was a great deal. Now, I just paused the video for a moment because I wanted to compute just how much 14,000 baht was or is in American uh, currency, and it's uh, $460 approximately. That changes from day to day, but about 460 bucks. I made the mistake, I was on an interview with a guy named Mark Thornton. His channel is, uh, what is his channel? His channel is uh, Every Man Has a Story. And uh, he's a guy who lives in the Philippines, in a town near where I used to live for a short period of time many years ago. And he interviewed me on his channel and he asked me a bunch of questions that I, I didn't know he was gonna ask me the question. So I gave off the top responses that were really wrong. So if you watch that interview and are now on my channel as a result of it, thank you. Nice to see you. Welcome to my channel. And I'm sorry, I gave you a lot of uh, misinformation about the price of things because I didn't compute them carefully. If you look in the comments of that particular video, you find the corrections. So yeah, it was about $460 a month for a one bedroom apartment in this place. It was quite a good deal. And when I first rented the place, I also had a place in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And my friend Eric, the Airbnb manager guy, used to rent it out for me while I was in Vietnam. I actually made a profit on it some months. <laughs> it was a great deal, but it's a good place to look into. Like I said, if you just go into the concierge or the, or the administrative people, in the ground floor of the building and ask them about rentals, they'll have plenty of information for you. One of the things that I found to be a, a, a real curiosity when I first arrived here at Lumpini Place was the number of really hot young Thai women that were living here. I mean, there was a disproportionate amount of Thai cuties living in this complex. And then these parking spots, there are more of them behind. There's, this is a garage, actually, the parking garage. And I suppose if you own a condo here, you get a parking spot with it. But they were generally empty during the week. And then on the weekends, these parking spots in the, in the garage would fill up with Lamborghinis and Porsches and all these high-end sports cars. And I, you know see the girls all getting in them and going out with their boyfriends and I was like you know what what's what's going on here the the condos within this Lumpini place complex are very often owned by men who have mianois now what a mianoi means it means minor wife it's a, a mistress in western terms and it's kind of a common thing here. It's, it's not talked about or openly uh, approved of, but with a wink and a nod, everybody turns a blind eye to it. You see, Thailand up until almost 1940 was polygamous. It was legal to have multiple wives. Now it became illegal in I think 1939, but that didn't mean it went away. My girlfriend's father had at least three wives that I know of, maybe more, had children with all of them. Boer is in touch with all her siblings. 
are full siblings and half siblings, and they're all quite close, and they're all over the damn country. So, and they all, you know, loved their father. He was a very uh, prosperous guy for the region that he lived in, and they uh, speak very highly of the man. So, you know, it's it was an accepted thing. Now, it still is. Uh, here in Bangkok, it's kind of done, you know, a little bit under the table. And if you're a man of means, you know, I guess it's okay to have one or two in the side. And apparently a lot of them live here in Lumpini Place. You can tell by the parking lot. The Lambos are showing up. You know, there's somebody with a few bucks. So just two short subway stops on the MRT in that direction will bring you to where I boarded the MRT near my Lumpini Place apartment. And that brings you the noisy Asok. Very much a centralized location in Bangkok. This is an expat area, if there ever was one. Also known as the Sukhumvit area. I'm now walking on a walkway that's attached to the BTS rail system, which is an above ground system, or an elevated line as we call them in New York. Or here it's often referred to as the Sky Train. Just over there, a short walk is Soy Cowboy. For those of you interested in that kind of thing. As a matter of fact, that building with Jasmine City written on it, where that uh, big Jumbotron is, is uh, Soy 23, I believe. And a and, uh, short walk in that direction will bring you to Soy Cowboy, which runs this way. You can access it from this end, too. It runs parallel to uh, this walkway. So in this direction that I'm walking now, will take you to uh, Nana Plaza, another entertainment zone. That's not really of much interest to me. I have a girlfriend and I don't do all that, but I know some people come to Thailand for that. And, you know, why not? They're happy to have you here. I'm headed down there to show you my favorite Italian restaurant. So up above is the BTS elevated rail line, light rail system. And beneath us is the MRT. And at this very busy exchange, is a very busy interchange between the two systems on the ground floor, tucked away in the corner here behind Dunkin' Donuts, is Pala, a really good Italian restaurant. Now they have good pizza. Pizza is a subject of much discussion, who likes what kind. But this is pretty good, I like it. But more than that, Food, the service, everything in here is kind of friendly. So I'm going to leave you now and have dinner. I'm having Italian food. The tips that I'm going to close this video out with are not necessarily uh, relevant to Italian food. But if you're going out and eating locally and eating Thai food, you are going to want to know the following information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Suwati kap na nun. Suwati kap. How do you say a little bit spicy? Pet nit noi kap. Kap kun kap. Thank you. Kap kun kap. Suwati kap pu kap. Suwati kap. How do you say not spicy? Mai pet. Kap kun kap. Thank you. You're welcome. And Nanun once again. Nanun, how do you say very spicy? Pit mak mak ka. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>